Do you want better Zoom audio? Well, in this video, I'm talking about remote work tips for Zoom meetings so you can hear and communicate more effectively on your next Zoom call. Coming up. Hi, I'm Dr. Derek, audiologist with ProfitHearing.com, bringing you the best insight in today's latest hearing aids and audio technology to improve your life. If you have concerns about your hearing, always consult with your local physician or audiologist. On this channel, we provide hearing healthcare education and audio technology product reviews. So if you like this content, please consider subscribing, hit the bell icon for notifications, and check out my free ebook in the description below. Okay, let's jump into the video. Today, I'm talking about what you can do to improve your audio and video quality of your next Zoom call for better communication. I know a lot of us are working from home right now and may be learning how to use video conferencing software for the first time. There are several tips and equipment options that I'll share today that can dramatically improve your overall audio and video quality. This is especially important if you have hearing loss or struggle with communication. I will leave links to all the products I discussed today in the description below so you can check them out for yourself. Understanding speech on a Zoom call can be easier if you follow these five steps. Oh, and make sure to watch until the end of the video where I'll walk you through the specific Zoom software settings that you'll need. Number one, quiet, well-lit environment. Find a quiet environment for your Zoom call. Use a room that's away from other people and distractions if possible. Being in a quiet environment is especially important if you have to use a laptop without headphones. If you must be on your Zoom call in an area with other people, at least try to have your back facing the wall. That way, other people on the call won't be able to see what's going on behind you and won't be distracted by it. You can also use a virtual background in the software to remove whatever is behind you. Also, make sure to turn on a light or sit near a window so that the light can shine onto your face. Having light behind you or off to the side will create large shadows on your face and lead to a poor image quality on your camera. Having good image quality means that it's easier to read lips and you'll access visual cues easier for improved speech understanding. Number two, headphones. Always use quality headphones if possible. Start with whatever you may have at home. Do you have Apple earphones or a headphone mic combination that came with your phone? Wearing something like this will not only make it easier to hear and understand people on your next Zoom call, but also having a microphone close to your mouth will dramatically improve the intelligibility of your voice for other people on the phone call. So make sure you have headphones that have a built-in mic. This particular headset has a TRRS audio plug, which stands for Tip Ring Ring Sleeve. Also it has three lines on it. This type of connection allows you to not only have a microphone, but also stereo audio in your headphones. If your headphones have just two lines on the audio cable, that means there's no microphone input. If your headphones do not include a microphone, the laptop computer will likely use the internal mic to pick up your voice, but the sound quality is not gonna be as good as if you're having the external mic that's close to your mouth. While basic headphones with a mic will improve your Zoom audio, there are other headphones that will improve the sound even more. These include passive or active noise canceling headphones. Passive noise canceling headphones cover the ear or seal down inside the ear enough to effectively block out extra noise from your environment. Active noise canceling headphones cover the ear or seal down inside the ear as well, but they include electronics that produce sounds to help cancel out even more noise. So I have an example of some passive noise canceling headphones. These are the Howard Light Sync headphones. They're basically like earmuffs um, with an audio adapter. So this blocks out the sounds around me. It has a very tight seal against my head. I can plug this into my computer or whatever I'm listening to, and I hear it a lot better. I don't hear the background noise quite as much. So this is passive. Bose noise canceling headphones are an example of active noise cancellation. I'm gonna have a review about this product in an upcoming video, and I'll leave a link to that in the suggested videos above as soon as it's available. But active noise cancellation includes the use of electronics to help filter out more background noise. If your headphones have a microphone and are connected to your computer by Bluetooth, they will transmit both your voice and the Zoom call audio. Number three, external microphone. 
So I recommend using a headphone mic combo to not only improve what you hear, but also to make it easier for the people on the call to understand you. If you're looking for a more professional setup, you can go one step further and buy a standalone external mic to use with your Zoom call. It can be something like this AKG C214 large diaphragm condenser mic or other broadcast quality mic. However, this kind of microphone will require an additional sound interface to use with your computer. Something I use is the Focusrite Scarlett USB interface. It allows you to connect your microphone in the front, adjust your volume, and then on the back it has a USB adapter that goes into your computer. However, if you aren't really interested in having this kind of a level setup, you can have an easier to use mic like a USB mic. So the mic will plug directly into the computer and you won't have to mess with any interfaces like this. Something I know right now that's popular is the Blue Yeti USB mic. It's very popular with podcasters and other creators, and it's an easy way to significantly improve the quality of your voice for others on the call at a reasonable price. Number four, camera. When it comes to cameras, most of us just use the included webcam on our laptops. The quality is usually adequate, but just make sure the camera is clean. Nobody likes a blurry image. Also, put your webcam at an eye level if possible. If you want a professional setup, I recommend the Elgato CamLink 4K. This is an interface that allows you to connect any HDMI output camera through USB to your laptop or whatever computer that you're using. You can then replace the default webcam with your external camera for professional image quality. Image quality can be just as important for Zoom calls as audio is. Being able to clearly see the person speak will help improve your ability to understand them, especially if you have hearing loss or have difficulty with communication. I will leave links to all the products I discussed today in the description below so you can check them out for yourself. Number five, Zoom audio and video settings. Okay, so let's take a look at specific software settings that you can use today to improve the quality of your Zoom meeting audio and video for better communication. You can also review your video and audio settings whenever you join a meeting. So the first thing you want to do is download and install the Zoom app on your computer. And when you first open Zoom, you'll see this little box here. But you want to go up here to the Preferences tab. Under Preferences, you'll see first thing is the microphone input level. So you can see in this case, my microphone input level is still in the green. Um, I'm using my interface, so this is my external mic with the interface. The interface is called the Scarlett Solo USB. I adjusted my microphone input level on my interface. Um, so in this case, I'll just have, have the input level set at a fixed setting. I've already checked this on my external device, so I don't really need to worry about it. But if you are using another kind of microphone, if you're using just a USB microphone, um, you would select it from this menu here, or if you're using your built-in microphone. In this case, I have a laptop, so a built-in microphone selected right now. You can see my voice level input. You can have it automatically adjust your microphone level if you want to do that. You also have the option to join audio by computer whenever you join the meeting. That just means that you can hear the participants as soon as you join the meeting. You can mute your microphone when you join the meeting by default. And you can press and hold the space key to temporarily unmute yourself. This is something that I like to use so that by default my microphone is muted and only when I press and hold on the space key will my microphone unmute and send my voice out to all the other participants. This way, if somebody's presenting a topic or having a discussion, they won't be distracted by noise, background noise, from all the other participants. The other thing to consider is the Advanced Settings tab. If I hover above this, you can see it, that it turns off audio enhancements such as echo cancellation and noise suppression. So the sound quality is not as processed as it would be otherwise if you weren't using this feature. If you don't want to use that, you can just have the computer do everything automatically for you. This way it automatically suppresses background noise and echo cancellation. But if you want to have a better sound quality of your voice going out to everybody, if everybody on the call wants to have a better audio quality for the other members, I do encourage you to select this option. When you are on the call, you'll see a little box pop up that allows you to click to enable original sound. So other than audio, we want to consider video. Under the video tab, we have the ability to select which camera we want to use. So in this case, I have my FaceTime HD camera, which is just the embedded webcam on my laptop. 
or you can have the CamLink 4K if you have that device. This would be like my external camera. So I can select between whichever camera feed I want to use. Enabling HD gives you a better quality of your video that's being sent out to everybody. Touch up my appearance might be something worth trying if you don't like the quality of your video. Then you have these other options as well. Something I like is turning off my video when joining a meeting. That way when I first join the call, I have to enable my video so that, that way I know I'm ready to send out my image to everybody on the call. So if you're just kind of getting set up and you're joining a phone call and you're not 100% ready to be seen by everybody, that might be something you want to use. And something also that's very handy is this video preview dialog box. So whenever you go to join a meeting, you'll see your image so you can adjust your image quality before everybody sees it. And the last thing I would look at would be the accessibility tab. And this is where you can adjust the appearance of your subtitles. So if you want to make your subtitles larger so you can see them a little bit better, that's where you would do it. So closed captioning can significantly improve communication for hearing impaired Zoom meeting members. So you definitely want to use this functionality if possible. Or you can skip this option if no one on the call needs it. But to use closed captioning, the meeting host must activate it. If you're the host of the meeting, in order to activate closed captioning, you need to first sign into your account. Go to Account Management and then Account Settings. And under the Meeting tab, you click the Enable Closed Caption. Meeting participants then can click on the Closed Captioning option on the bottom of the screen to activate closed captioning. But you need to make sure to select a participant in the meeting that can manually type in the text for closed captioning in real time or you can use a third-party transcription service. For more information on closed captioning and third-party transcription setup, check out the video and help center guide from Zoom in the description below. So once you've made your changes, go ahead and close the box and join your meeting. So for today's question, have you tried any of these remote work tips for your Zoom meeting? If so, did you notice any audio or video improve and was it helpful for communicating with your group? I'd love to know your thoughts, so please comment below and let's connect. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you receive value from this video, please like it, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon to be notified whenever a new video is posted. Remember to check out the notes in the description below for more information and to connect with ProFit Hearing on social media. Be a part of the ProFit Hearing community. If you're interested in hearing aids, click on the link in the description below for my free ebook, How to Buy Hearing Aids. Know what to ask your audiologist or hearing aid dispenser so that your hearing aids are easy to use and have all the features you're looking for. Remember, ProFit Hearing brings you the best insight in today's latest hearing aids and audio technology to improve your life. If you have concerns about your hearing, always consult with your local physician or audiologist. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.